Okay, I want to show you um, how to work with the K1C equation. I'm going to go ahead and download the Fundamentals of Engineering reference for the Materials Engineering section. And I'm going to scroll down to the section that I'm referring to. It's uh, this section right here that we talked about in class. Um, and we're dealing with this stress concentration in brittle, materi br brittle materials. But you remember in class that I said that it's actually not brittle materials, but it's uh, actually a brittle failure. So it's a brittle failure, and it can happen in, or brittle, brittle failure, brittle fracture, those are the same two things. It can happen in um, brittle or ductile materials. Okay, so the uh, relevant equation that we are interested in is um, this one here. K1 is equal to, it's actually K1 critical, is equal to Y sigma root pi A. And the pi A, or the pi, of course, is, you know, uh, 3.14. And the A refers to the geometry of the crack. And down here we have two different pictures. We have the case where you have a crack that's on the exterior surface. And over here we have a crack on that's on the interior. Now, just uh, as a reminder, uh, neither of these are to scale. These are, in fact, they're grossly exaggerated. Uh, and the kinds of cracks that we're talking about are microscopic cracks. Um, so the model treats these cracks as having either a, a essentially a half length of A. And you can see the full length of an interior crack is 2A. And this equation applies to both of those situations. So K1, the stress intensity, is actually a material parameter. And um, what this equation tells you is when the conditions are such, given by this equation, that uh, this K1C value is reached by the combination of the stress, the geometric condition, and then the size of the crack, you will have a brittle fracture in the material, regardless of whether it's ductile or uh, brittle material. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and do a calculation involving this equation here that we are interested in. Okay, we're back in the, uh, the Fundamentals of Engineering reference, and I wanted to point out that there is a table inside this that gives you the values of K1 critical uh, in the SI units and in the um, British units. So let's go ahead and work with this table. This is the question we're going to solve here. Uh, looking at the value of applied stress required to cause brittle fracture in 4340 steel if it has a surface crack of size, this says 0 0.06 millimeters. So here's the 4340 steel. Let's go ahead and, and jot down this number, 46 megapascals root meter. Okay, so I've written that down here. Remember, we're looking for the value of applied stress that's required to cause brittle fracture. Now, what we know is that brittle fracture will happen when the value, when these conditions are actually in place here. We've got uh, K1C equal to this, this value on the right here. So let's go ahead and work with that equation um, and, and plug in our values. Okay, we've got that, this equation, we've got 46 megapascal square root meters for the K1C value. And I can rearrange this equation so that I'm solving for the sigma applied. Sigma applied is equal to the K1C divided by y square root pi times a. And I just need to make sure that I have my a in uh, the... Um, meters so that I can cancel with this value here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these values in. I've got 46 megapascal square root of meters divided by 1.1 for y, because we're recalling that we're using the exterior crack here, uh, times the square root of pi times 0 0.06 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. I'm going to use an equation here. I mean a calculator, it's called a calculator. Gosh, I'm tired. Okay, I got that that equals 3046 megapascals, or roughly, um, I can see here that I only have, you know, no more than one significant figure down in this value right here, so I might as well just say that that's, you know, that's about 3, 3 
gigapascals is the stress required. Now, the funny thing about this is we can calculate that stress. So this is the stress required to, to have a brittle failure. But then we have to ask the question, will we actually have a brittle failure or will we have a yield? So the next question is, now we've got this sigma applied for brittle failure is about 3 gigapascals. But what is sigma yield? Is this, is it, is sigma yield greater than, greater than sigma applied for that brittle failure? And if it is, we know that it's going to fail by this brittle mode before it yields. So uh, that would be the next step. Okay, I just went and looked this up, and what I found was that the yield strength for 4340 steel is about 0.4 gigapascals. So we calculated that it would require 3 gigapascals in order to um, cause this brittle failure. So what, what would happen in this case is the, the 4340 would yield, oops, would yield prior to uh, brittle failure, or brittle fracture, we'll say. So what we were cal computing is the kind of stress that would be required for fracture, specifically in the case where you have, and this is grossly exaggerated, uniaxial tension, where this is the mode, mode one uh, fracture, opening of this crack, um, um, through uh, brittle fracture, and we have discovered that it would actually yield before it fractured. Now, again, the question was, well, what was the value of applied stress required? The question wasn't whether or not it would yield or fracture, but you can see in this case, if you compared these, the competition between the two modes of failure, yield and fracture, you, by this brittle failure, you'd see that you'd reach the yield point prior to reaching the brittle fracture stress. Okay, I hope this helps.